All right, working on hunting the block and cleaning everything up, decided to pull the valley pan off. Uh, and uh, I think I found a friend. Now, he's a little petrified. Hmm. Pretty good size one. You don't reckon he had a hammer and chisel in here, beating on top of the pistons. So, anyway, he's been there a while. He's done petrified. All right. Okay, engine's nice and clean inside. As you can see, not a bunch of gummed up crap, and uh, the lifters actually push out. Anytime that you can take a lifter and pull it out without having to work with it real hard and fight with it, you're, you're all right. Cam don't look too bad. It's gonna be just fine. And uh, I'll show you how the uh, mouse got in. Okay, evidently the mouse crawled through this hole and then come through here, squeezed himself out of this hole. You can see some of his hair. And then uh, he was stuck, he couldn't get back out. Uh, it happens. All right, just cleaned up. Okay, here's where we are. We've got her honed out. Got quite a bit of it cleaned up. Uh, what I done was uh, took uh, some rags and got them, actually soaked them in oil and put them in the bottom of the cylinder. That way anything that come off that blade hone would actually get stuck on that rag. Now we've got a couple places that's discolored a little bit where the top ring groove was but it's not you can't feel it so I'm not going to go any farther I don't want to take any more out than I have to so anyway ring in gap uh, four thousandths per inch of bore is what you need to sort of try to stick with it ain't got you know gotta, you gotta be exact but that's a four inch bore so that'd be sixteen thousandths and uh, there is fifteen slides through it. I think it, it's going to be about 16 is what the gap is. Now you can go bigger than that, but that's uh, that's a perfect gap. So we're good to go on everything. We'll get this ring back out and get it on the piston. And we've got to get our top back on. I got all the gaskets, our uh, valley pan cover and our valley pan. And then uh, we're going to start getting the pistons in and getting it rolling. And we got good cross hatches on the cylinder, so they're good to go. And like I said, you can see that discoloring. But uh, and I could go on and take that out, but I, there's no, you can't feel it. So I'm not, I don't want to take any more out than I, you know, absolutely have to. Really, you just want to get the glaze off the cylinder. So, uh, so that's it. We're going to uh, start rolling back together. I'm going to clean up a little bit more before I do, but and then go ahead and get this uh, gasket on the, the valley pan and move on from there okay folks I've been cleaning on the bottom side now uh, we're gonna pull the pickup off of course and clean it out really well I'm not gonna pull the oil pump out I know I had a lot of people tell me I need to check it but this thing had good oil pressure really good oil pressure so I'm not too concerned about it again we're fixing not restoring so you know one of the important things and I've got a little bit more cleaning to do but is to get the surfaces clean and dry you don't want any oil at all none on your surface uh, especially if you use an rtv or something like that because it don't make you know rtv is fine when it's dry on oil but when it's not dry it don't mix with oil good it won't stick to it good you end up having leaks uh, if you get it good and clean you don't have to worry about R rtv sticking to it any kind of silicone uh, permatex whatever but anyway we're going to keep cleaning up a little bit and we're going to try to at least get one piston in tonight and uh, we'll see how that works out. It's getting late on me and I've been towing a lot. So, Alright. Okay folks, I'm going to try to show you how I do this when I do it by myself. Uh, you can see I've got rubber on the ends of the, the studs. Uh, we've got some assembly lube we're going to put on the bearings and as you can see the bearings are used but not, not bad shape. Uh, if they were discolored in the center, you know where it was the Babbitt surface was coming off you would know it. Uh, okay, do not line up your rings. 
which I've seen this done before, believe it or not. As you can see, the compression ring and the second ring would be lined up. So you need to clock them. Now, you know, they, they got certain, you know, area they want you to clock it to. You know, quarter turn off, half turn off, whatever. And I just, I don't go by that. I just clock them away from each other. Make sure they're not lined up with the, with the groove in the oil ring right here. And uh, once you get them clocked, I'm going to show you how I, what I do before I put them in the uh, valve or the ring compressor. And I've got the journal up top, and I do that so as soon as I start the piston in, these automatically start on the uh, journal. That way, uh, it don't have, you know I'm I'm not worried about whether it hits the journal or not. It's definitely going to catch it and follow right right on through where it needs to be. So uh, and of course the knock goes to the front and I learned it when I was 15 years old uh, locks always line up this is a lock there's a corresponding lock on the other side and they always line up in other words they go on the same side so anyway all right let's uh, get it in the ring compressor and see if we can get one in there okay once I get my rings exactly where I want them And I'm happy with them. Then I just take some oil. This is actually mobile oil. This is not a Rotella. I've got it in a Rotella jug, but it's out of my 55 gallon barrel. And I go ahead and uh, pour oil right on the piston. So if you think it's going to smoke a little bit, when I start it, it probably will. Get it on the skirt. And I just cover the whole rings in and make sure you know the pen's got oil, which it does. I bought a new one. You know, if anybody's ever used these before, they'll get start getting a little bit of rust on them, they'll get crunchy, and I can't stand that. That bothers me, so I didn't want to mess with my old one. So I just got a new one. Okay, once you're happy with where your piston's at, and you got everything good, and I mean, make sure you're happy with it, because if you have trouble here and pops the ring out, it's aggravating as heck. But all right, let's see if we can get a piston in. Okay, mark toward the front. Start it down in. It should go right over top of the journal, which it did. And let's go find a wooden handle hammer. Okay, so I couldn't find anything with a wooden handle hammer wise. I know I've got one around here. I've got everything with plastic and rubber, but we're going to use an axe and just use the wooden end of the, of the handle. And uh, tap your ring compressor down. Make sure it's seated down all the way. Make sure your, light, your notch is exactly straight toward the front and just tap it in. Now, if for any reason you got to hammer that hard, you got something wrong. So we're going to raise it up and with the wheel lift here, and then get up under it and look, and we'll see where the rod placement is right now. All right, there it is. Uh, one thing I did forget to put the lube on the bearing. That's what happens when you don't videos. You don't uh, keep your mind on what you're doing. So uh, I'm going to turn that crank a little bit until I can get it away from that rod and go ahead and get some uh, get some lube on it. And then uh, we'll get this cap on. But as you can see, it went right into place with no issue whatsoever. So, all right. Okay, that sure was messy. i tell you what, I won't forget to do that again. So, uh, so what I do is I, I torque one at a time. When I torque this one, I turn the engine before I do anything else. And when I'm building an engine, I do that on the mains too. Torque one, turn it, because if that engine is going to lock down, it's not so bad with these bearings, but if you put a new set of bearings in or a new crank or something like that, you want to uh, make for sure that, uh, you know, you don't have one that's locking it down. And if you put it all together and then it's locked down, you won't know which one it was. So make sure you do that. And, uh, and yeah, I know somebody mentioned that, but I've seen it broken off. Uh, grease fitting. We've got to go through all the grease fittings on all this 
and uh, take care of all of it. But anyway, that's one down, seven to go, and we'll get uh, get all the pan back on everything cleaned up, and uh, then we will uh, start getting the top together. All right. Okay, folks, I think we're gonna I'm gonna call it a night. It's getting real dark, it's starting to get dark, and uh, I'm gonna update you on the Nash. I had a lot of people ask about it. Uh, the Nash is waiting on rear wheel cylinders. Uh, they're an eighth inch smaller than the front. I hadn't been able to locate any. So I think I'm going to go ahead and buy a set of, that's a little bit later model. And we might have to do some fabricating on the uh, backing plate to get them to work. But uh, I'm waiting on uh, some measurements to make sure that I'm going to be able to make them work. So anyway, that's our hold up with that. I thought about putting a set of front ones on the back, but that would put my front wheel cylinders at one inch and my back wheel cylinders at one inch and the way that I'm seeing everything is, is one inch on the front seven eighths on the back uh, usually your back is an eighth inch smaller I'm assuming that so you can uh, there's no proportionate valve so you know it controls the front to rear braking so uh, I want to go back with it right I really don't want to do one inch on front and back I don't know how it would do I may never notice it but you know that time you hit the brakes is when you would notice it you know when you when somebody pulls out in front of you so Anyway, we will uh, keep continuing on this and uh, hopefully get it knocked out soon. And uh, like I said, I've got the gas tank ready for the 49 and we're going to get no on the uh, the Dodge. And uh, I did count it. It was, uh, I thought on the, the Dodge, the Lancer, that maybe somebody had, because it had the old valve cover, that somebody had painted that engine and put a later model uh, intake exhaust manifold on it because it's got an EGR valve, but it's an early EGR valve. But uh, I did check the block today, and it does have five freeze plugs. And uh, so I'm assuming that it's a, uh, a later model. I know where the number's at. It's just hard to get to. So we'll, we'll clean it off and, you know, work with that. But uh, I'm going to cover this thing up, and then uh, we're going to call it a night, and then we'll get back on it and hopefully get all these pistons in and get it all knocked out. So, All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Until next time. Bye.